welcome to another jewelry making video brought to you by KeepSaintCrafts.net. Today we're going to shape some wire, hammer it out, wrap some beads, and we'll end up with a pair of earrings with great rustic appeal. So to make these earrings, first you'll need some heavy gauge wire. This is 14 gauge copper wire, and you'll also need some fine gauge wire. This is 28 gauge. You'll need some beads, and try to find smaller beads, like three millimeters or less is good. These are little wooden beads that I thought would be nice with the wire. But I had also considered using these pearls, which I thought would be a pretty contrast. So dig through your bead stash and see what you have that will go well with the wire you have. You'll also need a pair of ear wires. And then for tools, you'll need a few, a file to clean up the ends of the wire, a large round mandrel or some bale making pliers. I'll be using a seven millimeter round section of this. Some heavy gauge, heavy duty wire cutters, chain nose pliers. You'll also need a chasing hammer. That's the one with the rounded head, not a flat head. And a bench block or a small anvil to pound on. And then to get our oval shape, I'm going to be using this oval mandrel. But if you have something you can wrap things around to get your shape, then that's fine too. So the first thing we're going to do is shape the small round loop at the top of our wire. And I'm going to use these pliers and I'm going to put the wire a little past and I'm just going to wrap, making sure I stay on the round part. And you just keep tightening as you twist and then loosen to move. And what I want, I want my loop to be round all the way around because there's a point that you reach where you can't make it round anymore and it's longer the stiffer the wire is. So you can see where this is straight here. So I made sure I made it round past that so I can cut off that straight bit. Then we're going to use our mandrel. And these mandrels actually come in sets. So you can make any shape you want. Um, here's square, here's a triangle shape, and then round ones. Um, I like the oval. And I took some time and when I first got these and wrote on them what sizes everything is. So I'm going to use a fairly large oval in this set, the 26 millimeter by 20 millimeter. And I'm going to place the top of my loop right up here. And it's a little tricky. You just kind of use your thumb and hold it in place, especially this heavy gauge wire. And just wrap around the mandrel. And just like in the loop, I'm going to go past where I want to be so that the wire is rounded nicely. And then I'll just twist that loop up. And you definitely don't want to use your nice, fine uh, wire nippers to do this. This is heavy wire, so I'm going to use some kind of beat up wire cutters. And I'm going to cut the wire right where it meets that loop. Notice I left it on the coil, and that way there isn't much waste. You'll end up using about five inches of wire. Uh, per earring. So there's that, and I'm just going to make this loop a little more elongated. Squeeze it a little. And then I'm going to repeat up here on the loop, cutting off, just kind of bend it out, and then cut the wire off right where it meets. There we go right where it meets the other wire. And I'm going to hold on to that piece because we don't want that to go flying. And I'm not going to worry about these rough ends just yet. We'll use the file in a minute. Now the next step is to bring in your bench block and your chasing hammer. And you want a round faced hammer so that when you pound you're not going to be getting the marks of the sides of the hammer. And then it's just a matter of pounding all around to flatten this out. And I'm not going to 
demonstrate all the pounding. You can see I'm not using a lot of force. I'm just tapping. And just tap all the way around. Keep your finger out of the way. Change position. And keep going. Flip it over. Do the other side. Keep going till it's flattened out and you have a nice even thickness all around. It will grow a little bit like this one. And if you like, you can use the other side, the rounded side of your hammer, and give it this nice hammered finish, pounding all around. And you'll have to do both sides to do that. Once that's done, you can take your file and go in and file off those ends. And this one you can actually file at a bit of an angle because that's how it meets that loop. And you may have to use a pair of pliers to twist that end in so that it meets the frame neatly. So now that you've hammered to your heart's content, have shaped your frames the way you like them and have filed those edges smooth, it's time to add beads. By the way, it's a good idea to first do the shaping of your wire for both earring frames before you start hammering it, uh, just to make sure that they match in size and shape. Otherwise, you'll have to do what I did, which is make a third, and then pick the two that most closely match each other. But if you do that, you can always make the third one into a pendant. So now, for the beads, we need our fine gauge wire and some beads. And the first thing we're going to do is make sure that we have two frames that are opposite each other, so we have opposites for the earrings. And we're going to take one end of our piece of fine gauge wire and we're going to wrap it around the end of the frame with the split three or four times, nice and tight. Make those wraps right next to each other. You can use a pair of chain nose pliers to really crimp those wraps onto the frame and then trim off the excess wire. And I like to do it on the inside. I'm going to tuck that end in, but if it's on the inside it's not going to be poking or scratching anybody. And then string on a bead and hold the bead to the outside of the frame. And then the way I like to, to wrap wire on a closed frame, let me move that out of the way so you can see what I'm doing, is I poke up a loop with my finger. And that way you have much less chance of getting kinks. If you find you have a loop crossed over itself, stop right away and uncross that loop because a loop is a kink waiting to happen. So then we're going to wrap around two full wraps between each bead. and then string on another bead. So once again, hold the bead, and then again, poke up the wire, and then wrap. And once you get practiced at this, you can move along pretty quickly. And just repeat, going all the way around your frame, and then when you end, end the way you began with three or four nice tight wraps. So once you've finished all your wraps, you just need to add your ear wire. Use a pair of chain nose pliers to twist it open. Insert the loop of your frame. Twist the ear wire closed. And you're done. Repeat for your other earring. Here's another look at the earrings we made today. I hope you enjoyed this project and that you'll give wire wrapping and hammering and shaping a try. If you have sterling silver wire, that would work great. Brass wire, any wire really. If you have copper or silver or brass that is uncoated, it will tarnish. And you can actually use that to your advantage to get a great old, old antiqued look by soaking the items in liver of sulfur and then polishing up the high points and the dark will stay in the crevices in the wires. 
Here's a little bit of a bonus for you. I took that third frame that I had made and wire wrapped on the pearls I had been considering. This will be a necklace pendant is what I have in mind. I think I want to put something in the center like a larger pearl or maybe a crystal. So you can see here's an example of how you can take something and take an idea, change it up a little bit and run with it. Thank you so much for watching Keepsake Crafts videos. Up on the screen are two more videos you may enjoy watching. Please be sure to click subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos and also click the like button if you like this video. And be sure to check out my blog KeepsakeCrafts.net where I have lots more crafting and sewing ideas and inspiration. Thanks again for watching. Have a good one. Bye-bye.